Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of Construction Management. Students, in the entire lecture series of Construction Management, we have covered up Introduction to Construction Management, Construction Planning. Now, today, we are going to start with Construction Material Management. Yes, students, one of the important topic, Construction Material Management. As we are working for, as we are learning construction, so a major portion of the construction is occupied by the materials. All right. So let us see that what we are going to understand in this session. So today we are going to start with the introduction to material management or the background study of the chapter. Then we are going to see the aims and objective of the material management. And today we are going to learn an important theory that is functions of material management. Today we are going to cover up three topics. All right. So let us start with introduction to the chapter. So students, the importance of material management can be understood by or can be realized by that in an in any construction project, nearly forty to fifty percent of the cost is occupied by the materials. For an example, if you are if you are constructing a bungalow of 1 crore, then nearly 40 to 50 lakh rupees of amount will be occupied by only purchasing of the material. So now, think for a moment that if you are not managing the materials of worth rupees 40 or 50 lakh, you are not going to complete the project within the time. Or you are going to have the over cost or you, have, uh, or you are going to have the, uh, you know, the excess of the material or the wastage of the material. So there is a certain need of the material management. Material management is something like construction planning that it starts even before the project starts like what kind of material, what specification of material, what manufacturing of material, in what quantity all these things you have to decide well in advance as you have done the construction planning. So that is your material management is is kind of kind of construction planning that you are deciding something well in advance. So, so let us list down the what kind of materials we use in our construction. I am not talking about 5 or 10 materials. There are hundreds of materials which we use. Let us start. So, first is cement, sand, aggregate, bricks, blocks, reinforcement steel, binding wire. Uh, then you use uh, white cement. Then you use plywood, timber material. Uh, steel form works, other form works, uh, tiles, uh, marbles, stones, etc. So these are the all the materials which we use, generally use in our construction. So we need to manage all of them. Students, nearly 10 to 20 percent of the material on every project currently they are being wasted. It is estimated that nearly 10 to 20 percent of the materials which we procure on the site or which we establish on the site are being wasted or illegally buried in the construction. Think about that 10% or 20% of 1 CR, that much amount we are wasting behind the materials due to lack of material management. Now, let us look at the aims and objective of the material management. So here are the aims of the material management that to uh, Provide, uh, provide the material in right quantity, right quality, with, within appropriate price or budget, from the right source of supply and at the right time of the project. So that are the major aims of the material management. That, why do we material management? Why do we, do we have the material management? To have the right quantity of the materials, that if, if we require 500 cement bags at a time, I do not procure 5000 or I do not procure only 100. If it is a requirement of 500, then I should only buy 500. So right quantity, right quality, OPC, PPC, what kind of material, and we are currently discussing the only cement, but what kind of material, quality. Then right price, what is the correct price, what supplier is providing what price, is it including GST, is it including transportation, is it including loading and loading, so what are the right price. 
at the right time, at what time of the phase we are requiring, and from the right source that he is, he is dependable supplier or not. So these are the aims of the material management. Now let us look at the objectives of material management. So here are the objectives of the material management to minimize the material cost, to supply the material at the right time within the right quantity, to reduce the inventory cost, to maintain the uh, to maintain the relation with the supplier. So this is this is the objectives are a very general answer that you can write it by yourself. So these are the uh, I have mentioned a few and we have talked a few, but this is the list of the objectives of the material management. So I hope we are now very much clear about that why we need material management in our life or in our in our life as, as in in the construction project. All right. So let us move forward with our main topic of today that is the last topic which we are going to discuss that is functions of material management what are they let us see so there are 10 functions of the material management starting with materials planning procurement custody material accounting transportation inventory control and management system material codification computerization source development and disposal these are the 10 functions which we need to understand in order to learn the material management all right so let us begin our discussion with materials planning so materials planning is a scientific way to define what material we require in what quantity what kind of material we require in what quantity that is material planning what we were doing in construction planning, what activity we are going to perform one after each other. So material planning, what material we are going to use in what quantity, all right? So materials planning involves identification of the material, estimation of the material, defining the specifications for the material, forecasting the requirement, locating the right source. So five steps in material planning, there are five steps. First, you identify the material, what material you require to do the work. Then you estimate the material, that in what quantity you require the material. Then you define the specification, that the material which you are going to use in the project, having what specification, grade, X, or the company manufacturer, XYZ. So then forecast that at what time or at what frequency you will require this material and last right source that you uh, that you take the quotation from the number of vendors and then you decide that okay or from this vendor we are going to purchase the material so that is your materials plan second is procurement let us see that so procurement procurement is basically purchasing of the material then against of some money you purchase the material so material can be purchased by two ways, local procurement, centralized procurement. In our construction industry, you can purchase a material by two methods, local and centralized. What are they? Let us start with local procurement. So in the case of local procurement, the site engineer or the site planning engineer identifies the requirement of the material do the survey of the nearby local market and purchases the material as per the requirements. That is your local procurement. In our simple language, the site people, site people finds the supply of the material by themselves. That is the local, that is the local procurement. So now what is, now what, let us understand what is centralized procurement. So under the centralized procurement of the material uh, materials, uh, the required materials are purchased from the head office or from a particular purchase department. So in such case, the site people, the site persons will raise a requisition of the material that this much materials are required. Then, then the, the requisition will be, will be sent to the head office. Now at head office, either owner himself or the purchase manager will, will again verify the requirements and then they will order on behalf of the site. So that is your centralized procurement. Now both the methods, students, centralized purchasing and local purchasing, both the, both the methods have their own advantage and disadvantage. 
like in the local there will there will be no delay but there are there are chances that uh, that cost will be a little high because they are purchasing from the local market apart from that there are there, there could be the, there could be a disadvantage of a quality issue that when you are purchasing from the local market the, so you are purchasing 100 bags from x and another 100 bags from y so each lot you need to verify the quality while when you do centralized purchasing when you do centralized purchasing the advantage is you get as low price due to bulk purchasing or the commitment to purchasing from the single source for an example currently you are purchasing only 500 bags but you know that this company is only going to buy from a single supplier so there are future needs for the same for the same uh, uh, you know contractor so prices will be very low smoother purchasing the site people has only focus on to the execution they do not have to care about the quality and the uh, and the delivery of the of the materials and the specialized purchase people have better market knowledge so these are the advantages we get from the centralized centralized method has generally only one disadvantage that is that by by going for the centralized procurement the cost of the co other cost or the indirect cost or the overhead cost is bit of expensive that you need to hire a person or there, there should be a, 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 a computer PC with the internet connection so there will be an extra cost of purchasing so that is the only disadvantage now as we understand that the purchasing has two kind of methods of purchasing there are two kind of approaches also in the uh, procurement early procurement approach and late procurement approach in early approach, what happens that you early store store the material before the before the requirements in advance. So when you when you purchase the material in advance, the unnecessary amount is being blocked. You need to have the storage enough storage space, and there are chances of theft or damage to the material. And there is late approach as and when required. So there are chances that you can't purchase the material at the right time. For an example, if I if I purchase the if I require the material tomorrow, if I, I try to purchase today, supplier might say you that it will take you three days more. So in the late approach, there are chances of delay, but in the earlier there are also certain disadvantages. Alright, so that is our second function procurement. Now move forward with third. So the third function is custody. Custody that means when you receive the material, you store the material. You are not going to use it directly. For an example, if I am procuring 100 bags, I am not going to use the 100 bags at that time only. I have to store the material. So when, that is the taking custody of the material. So while you are taking the custody of the material, there are certain, there are certain documents which are involved in the custody, such as inward register, issue register, outward, gate pass, delivery chalan, indent, material receipt note, etc. So these are the custody documents by which you can have the idea that what material has, has, has been into the site and what has been used. Right? So that is our third function, custody. The next function that is materials accounting. So the main function, so the main function of the material accounting is to analyze and monitor the inflow and the outflow of the materials so material accounting involves material stock accounting material issue and return accounting wastage analysis etc so students by performing material accounting we can have the idea of what material what are the inflow of the material and what is the outflow of the material so we can track that how much material is being wasted there are number of reasons of material being wasted let us see some of the main reasons that material material wastage happens so here are the reasons of wastage of the material during procurement not during execution these are the reasons why during procurement that buying more material than required buying of the wrong specification material untimely purchase of the material improper handling wastage or uh, during transportation poor storage theft and the damage of the material so these are the reasons which which 
contributes in the material wastage. So I hope we are clear up to this point. That is our fourth. That is our fourth function. Now let us move forward with the fifth fifth function. That is transportation. Let us see that. So transportation, transportation is an essential part of the material management because a material because a material. Uh, the place of the material changes from the point of manufacturing to the point of use. First, they are manufactured at some factory, then it gets to the uh, dealer's shop, then we buy them, then we store the material, and at last we use the material. So there are various stages of transportation in the entire material cycle. So proper care should be taken of the each of the material while they are in the transportation state. So that is our fifth function. Transportation very easy, so we are moving forward very quickly to the sixth function that is inventory control and management. So first, first we need to understand what is inventory. So inventory are the resources in the idle condition. They are going to use in the project, but currently they are idle condition. So that are your resources, or uh, that are your pardon, that are your inventory. So basically, basically. The importance of inventory management can be understood by two aspects. First, if as generally we refer as it stock, so if there is more stock on my side, then my money will be, my funds will be blocked. I need to have the storage space, and there are chances of theft or damage to material. But against of that, if I have very low stock, then there will be shortage of material and causing delay to the activity. So there are two aspects. That we cannot store high stock or we cannot have low stock. So we need to focus on our inventory control. That what amount of stock we should carry, such as they not block enough amount of money, such as they do not cause the delay. So there are number of methods for inventory control, such as ABC analysis, FSN analysis, VED analysis, XYZ analysis, etc. That we are going to learn in the. Next few sessions that these are the inventory monitoring control system. So I hope we are clear about what is inventory and what are the methods of inventory control. Moving forward, the next is material codification. Let us see that. So in construction companies, where some thousand materials are stored during a project, so to track to have the better records of the material. They do codifications of the material. Yes, yeah, if, if we talk about Shapoji, Pagamji, and LNT, such big companies, so they have their own material storage, big storage, like like an entire shop, because they are having number of projects and high volume projects. So whereas the companies having thousands of material, how to keep record of that? So they use codification that that they identify the material based on a specific code. So material codification. Can be done by three aspects. First, numerical codification, alpha numeric codification, and last is color codification. So let us see about numerical codification. So here is an example of a numerical codification that to identify identify a material, there is a specific number given to the material. Now, students, this number. Is having a specific logic that is not the random number. So the first digit is having the is identifying uh, is indicating the main group. Second is indicating the subgroup. Third is indicating under the subgroup name of the material. Then there is grade or specification. The remaining numbers are uh, identifying the grade, diameter, weight, etc. So this is how you can do the material codification by numerical. Let us see the example of. Alpha numerical. So here is an example of alpha numerical. Again, in alpha numerical, that is the combination of number and A to Z alphabets. So again, the first numerical alphabet is the main category, then sub category, then class or the actual name, then other dimensions, grade, or the specifications of the materials. So that is alpha numerical, right? And if we talk about color codification, so in color codification. Based on various colors, we are we identify the materials. So that is your material codification. Now let us talk about the computerization eighth function, computerization. Let us see that. So by computerization, that means by use of various computer application, 
we can do the material management such as forecasting the change in price of the certain material having the proper material schedule that what time which what quantity of the material is required preparing the specification and the finalizing the supplier etc so these are the these are the use of computer application for the material management all right now the next is the next is source development let us see that so students managing vendors or the supplier is an important concern in the material management the evaluation of the vendors to be done on the regular basis and only satisfactory vendors are to be encouraged it is very important to develop a relationship between customer and the supplier there are certain methods such as vendor managed inventory but students by source development here i would try i would like to inform uh, what i what i want to convey is that your material vendor should be able to understand your project requirement he should not treat you only as the customer he should be he should be knowing about the criticality of the project understanding your image or value etc so source development is a biggest issue there are certain ways by you can select the right supplier and the supplier selection is uh, is based on the certain various factors so that is your source development now the last function of the material management is disposal let us see that so every year old and the used item or even unused materials are thrown away easily are disposed of every year on every project tons of material are being wasted so the point is when you are disposing this material try to evaluate the quality of the materials and if it is having a certain quality so try to reuse them if not then and only then you should dispose for an example the the corrosion the corrosion steel or the wasted steel you should be used in the base pcc slab surrounding the building so you can uh, so you can have the steel use of that wasted steel there before scrapping it so when you are disposing the material quality assessment should be there that what is the quality of that material it is reusable or so that is about all our 10 functions of material management i hope we are very much clear about it so this is it that was all about in today's session in the next session we are going to start inventory control systems such as abc method vd method fsn method etc all right so in case of any query or doubt you can always contact me on my mail or my number thank you